This is another sign of the times, an analysis, and a commentary. The worst California wildfires ever. At least 58 people have died since California's three wildfires broke out, but countless other residents narrowly escaped with their lives. These survivors will never forget those close calls. The campfire which erupted in Northern California has killed at least 29 people and burned through 113,000 acres or more of land. Already the most destructive fire in the state's history was just 30% contained. The Woolsey Fire, which doubled in size overnight, killed at least two people and burned nearly 100,000 acres. Both fires prompted the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people, some only realizing how dangerous the fires had become when flames arrived at their doorsteps. The Hill Fire, which destroyed 4,500 acres in Ventura County, was 80% contained, the result of aggressive firefighting and favorable weather conditions. Wildfires have become a staple of life in this state. They start up suddenly and grow feverishly, tracking their unpredictable movements and awaiting the authorities' orders to get out are now part of being a Californian. It is true that California wildfires are getting larger and that most of the state's largest wildfires have happened this century. The Mendocino Complex Fire earlier this year was the biggest California fire on record as measured by acres burned. The campfire is already the most destructive in state history, having raised more than 6,000 homes. The fires aren't just getting bigger, they're becoming more unpredictable, too. They're often burning hot through the night when they used to cool, racing faster up hillsides and torching neighborhoods that were once relatively safe. Researchers are attributing at least part of the difference to climate change because in a warming world, vegetation dries out faster and burns more easily. And the most deadly and costly fires happen at the wildland urban interface because they damage houses, towns, and lives. The campfire has already matched the deadliest fire in state history, killing at least 29 people and the death toll may rise. We have vulnerable housing stock already out there on the landscape. These are structures that are often built to building codes from earlier decades and they're not as fire resistant as they could be. This issue of where and how we build our homes has left us very exposed to home losses and fatalities like these. And thousands of residents in the wooded town of Paradise did what they were told to do when the morning skies turned dark and an inferno raged across the hills. They got in their cars and fled. What happened next was the vehicular equivalent of a stampede packing the roads to a standstill. In the hours after the devastating wildfire broke out around Paradise, tree-lined streets in the town swiftly became tunnels of fire blocked by fallen power lines and burning timber. Frantic residents, encircled by choking dense smoke and swirling embers, ran out of gas and ditched their cars. Fire crews, struggling to reach the town, used giant earth movers to plow abandoned vehicles off the road as if they were snowdrifts after a blizzard. Farther south, near Los Angeles, where another vast fire continued its destruction, more than 250,000 people had been ordered to leave their homes, a mass evacuation that likewise was all but halted at times by snarled roads Again and again, in California's battle with wildfires, roads have emerged as a major vulnerability for those escaping. A 2015 report by the United States Department of Agriculture found that between 2000 and 2010, the last year for which 
data was available, the number of people moving into the urban wildland interface had increased by 5%. According to the report, 44 million houses, equivalent to one in every three houses in the country, are in the wildland urban interface. The highest concentrations are in Florida, Texas, and yes, California. And the fires are getting bigger every year. Yes, climate change is real and it's happening right now. Again, and this is another sign of the end of times as we know them, transition days, which is a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations? And that should be a very important question to ask. Revelation chapter 16, verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. And humans were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom or nation was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings and leaders of the east might be prepared. It's time for the spiritual and physical manifestation of the book of Revelation. And all these are more signs. And this is what I see, think, feel, and spiritually discern.